Tara, this week? Has it been an extra stupid week? There was an eclipse. Oh my god. I had normally I uh we, we do about six stories a week on the show. Uh just to keep things in a in a rather timely manner and don't spend all day. So on we're that. not here until like four in the morning. Because we probably could be. It this there there come weeks doing this where it's very, very hard to pare it down. And this week it was very, very hard to pare it down. There's even one we're just gonna have to cover real quick and move on because well. There's just too much stupid. There really is. My God, there is. Oh. Hey, is great? You said Grady's being kind of grumpy today. Yeah. Something is in the air, man. Like every cat at the shelter today was grumpy and pissed off. I got, I got scratched up by my little kitty boyfriend Simba. There were fights. Everybody was grumpy. Like my cats don't really want anything to do with me. It's just. All, all the cats like conspired and they're all pissed off today so it's not just you you're not alone actually Peggy are you in there yeah Peggy's inside the tower literally the only time she goes inside this tower is when I'm on the air she just goes in there and sits yeah literally the only time she goes in there why cause fuck me that's why <laughs> Because <laughs> you're not going to fucking exploit me. Uh, well, Am I okay? I'm fine. Yeah. I picked Simba doesn't like to be picked up, but he was getting in a lot of fights. So I picked him up and moved him to the solarium outside. And he, he batted me a little bit, but he forgave me later on. So it was all okay. <laughs> all right. Well. I blog about Simba for the for the shelter blog. You could read all about my cat boyfriend there. Oh, please don't be dropping out of sync again. No. That is so annoying when it does that. Don't do that. Don't drop out of See, sync. Catherine's cat's been grumpy too. I'm telling you, all the cats today, man. Something's up. All the cats are pissed off. The uprising is going to begin. All right, let's thank God. Let's get into this because we've got a lot to cover this week. Here we go. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible shit, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call "What the Fuck Is Wrong with You." And of course, it is the week after the eclipse. I'm crazy we had one story last week this week god damn it god just what gonna... cracks me up is it's not like like i know the countrywide total eclipse was like a once in a lifetime thing but eclipses aren't uncommon hmm. we act like they never ever happen but they do you frozen now you're back well, let it go. Well, here's this. This looks like a normal story at first. But when we drill down, we're going to find it's not exactly a normal story. Did you see the version of this The Guardian did? So. Okay, Headline. Look- about that. The headline reads, how to recognize symptoms of retina damage from eclipse viewing. And it's it's like a standard, you know, kind of thing about how optometrists... I know if you fucked up your eyes. Right. But then you get to a certain line in this story that, that makes you, that gives you pause. This is from a nurse practitioner, Trish Patterson. She says... They haven't had any patients with damage from looking at the eclipse, but they've had a few customers experience pain after they put sunscreen in their eye Monday since they did not have protected glasses. Not how that works. At all. Not. 
not how that works. Gonna fuck your shit up pretty good. Gonna hurt. Not gonna protect your eyes from the sun. I can't tell if I've lost your sound or if you're just apoplectic beyond speech. Let's do all the emojis. Mother... Hi! Yeah, that's hella dumb. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Not on your eyelids. They were putting this shit in their eyeballs. That's not how you suck. Just what? How do you live? And like, that's gotta sting like a motherfucker. How have you survived? How, it's, it's. And how have you made it this far in life? How do you get out of your house and go outside and come back every day and not die? And you just die because you forgot to breathe. Or because you tried to, to, to ride on the train. Yeah. Or because you saw, like, a very, uh, like, traffic and thought, I can beat that car. How do you, how do you get this far in life? And, like, you know pretty quickly when something's in your eye that doesn't belong there. Because it hurts like a motherfucker. It's like, it's like, if I, I told need... you the story about how my mom accidentally burned out my pink eye when I was a kid, right? Yes. Because she put eardrops instead of eye drops burn the fuck out of my eye with literal acid, but it also burned out the pink eye. Not, I wouldn't recommend it. No. It's, but it's, I knew pretty quick that whatever was in my eyeball didn't belong there. It's like, do you know why we take vitamins for minerals? Because eating rocks doesn't work! You can't prove that. Fuck me! Have you tried? No, because I'm not an idiot. <laughs> I mean, maybe if you like powder them down and put them in a juice. Next up, oh, let's get past this because I'm just, just make me sad. Next up, this comes from Compton, and we got video. Oh boy, good. Straight job. out of Compton. Tara, I should have my picture for that. Tara. <laughs> Tara. What? What'd I do? That. That was. What? Understood. No. The story is out of Compton, right? <sighs> Are we using some kind of alternate news source? Because if not, it's straight out of Compton. We got video. Let's have a look here. What you're seeing is a car getting repossessed. And the reason why it's skidding all along the road like that is the guy driving the tow truck is terrified. And the reason the guy driving the tow truck is terrified is there's a man on the back with a crowbar trying to smash out his window. Who is that man? He's the owner of the car getting repossessed. You can't re-repossess it. At least not by force. And as you can see, it's hardcore though. That horrible screeching sound you hear is the car dragging on the street and sparks flying everywhere. So, like, you're wrecking your car anyway. And there's the popo. You are destroying your car doing that. Terry, you're too white. Duh. Why did you do that? <laughs> Why did you do that? Was the question posed there. So, yeah, apparently what happened was that was you, you uh, witnessed uh, the car's owner was trying to stop the truck from repossessing the car. Um, the man could be or, man could be a, the man riding and hitting the tow truck and the truck's driver were both detained, questioned and later released. Released? He got let go? Yes. Everybody got released from that one. I 
feel like that's a little bit of jail. It is a little bit of jail. Yeah, at least. It's reckless endangerment, and all there's sparks on the road, and you you are attacking someone's private property, which is the tow truck. Yeah, I feel like that's some jail. The car's owner somehow got into the back of the tow truck and started bashing in the rear windows with a crowbar, shattering them. That's also assault. Yep. But the cops are like, all right, y'all had your fun. Go home. Go home. Are you Are you sorry? Are you, yeah. Are you never going to do it again? You fucked up your car, though. Yeah. Even, like, even if the guy was like, okay, fuck this. You can have your car. Your car's fucked up now. And let's go further on that. Even if the guy says you can have your car, they're going to come back for it again. Yeah. Because yeah. when they repossess your car, it means you don't own it anymore. It's not yours anymore. It's not your car. Because you can't pay them for it. Yes. And the law but will... You can't pay for things, you can't have them. It's... Unless you're really, really wealthy on paper. Yeah, it's... it's, Yeah. It's just... The law... If, if the law says something, a crowbar is not going to stop the law. <laughs> But wouldn't that be nice sometimes <laughs> if you were just like, nope, got my crowbar. Where's that constitution? Grr. Why don't crowbars fall into the right to bear arms? Oh, they should. Not fair. Why don't vavuzelas fall into the right to bear arms? Well, they're not a weapon. Have you heard I of think, them? I think you're legally just allowed to have a vavuzela. Have you heard them before? Yes, but I don't think there's a law against them. I think they. I kind of think those should be the new weapons of the resistance. Whenever the fucking Nazis want to have a little march, Nazi march, I want like 200 people with vuvuzelas, and every time they start chanting, just until they go home. Well, you did see the guy with the tuba, right? Yes. Yeah. We need to get bagpipe Vader on that shit too. <laughs> So all the annoying instruments. This next one is someone. Sometimes you get in a situation that is, of course, outside of your normal experience. And it occurs to you to try to do the right thing, to call in someone who knows more than you to call in authorities. Good. I, this next one was good thought, bad execution. Police don't want you to bring them unexploded World War II rounds. Oh. The tweet. Oh, the tweet. Dixon, Illinois. Here's yet another reminder that any unexploded munitions you happen to find probably shouldn't go in your car. Somebody <laughs> put an unexploded anti-tank round in a box and drove it to their local police station in Dixon, Illinois. They'll they'll do a house call for that. <laughs> yeah, at, here's the first this was their so we'll Take call it, rounds. Like, fuck. Here was their solution, cardboard box driving a car. This was the police's solution. That's a bomb squad. That's a yeah. bomb squad robot. Don't touch that. It's a bomb. Oh, I need a bomb. I was going to put it in a box. <laughs> I put it out for the trash. <laughs> no. They'll, they'll come to your house for that. They will. That is one of those things where they will make house calls. Take all the unexploded World War II rounds to Dan. No. 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 Absolutely do not do that. Yes. No. Yes. This because there was the good idea. It was like, whoa, I found explosives. I should get the police involved. Then there was the bad idea. They're pretty busy. I'll just bring it to I don't them. Make them come all the way down here. Yeah, I did I, I don't want to be a bother. But you know what? I shouldn't have this bouncing around in the car. I better put it in a box. Because <laughs> I don't want to just bouncing around in the car. That's dangerous. As we all know. I better put it Box. The easiest way to mitigate an anti-tank ground exploding is cardboard. 
I don't know if you know, in the original script for Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of Crystal Skull, he didn't escape the nuke in a refrigerator. It was just a refrigerator box. It was a refrigerator box, but but yeah. Spielberg... But it didn't really play on camera. Yeah, he thought that was a little too unrealistic, so they yeah. upped it to a full-on refrigerator. But little did they know, that's more realistic. Because if you just got in a box, that's why cats love boxes, because you're impervious to harm inside a box. Everybody knows that. Oh, All boxes are made of like super Kevlar and adamantium. Well, that story was good intentions, bad execution. This, in an unusual circumstance, this is yet another, you find yourself in an unusual circumstance and do exactly the wrong goddamn thing. Kid finds loaded gun in Lenox Square dressing room. <gasps> Mom pulls trigger to see if it's real. Really? Atlanta, Georgia. Stop it. Stop it. Stop Mother it. and son were inside of a dressing room in the Adidas store at Lenox Square Wednesday when the eight-year-old found what he thought was a toy gun under a bench. That's when police said the mom pulled the trigger to, quote, determine if the gun was real. A single shot was fired from the 22 caliber gun. No one was injured. There was minor damage to the wall. Really? I don't know if this gun is real. I don't know if we should bother the cops. Let's find out if this is really, if we really need them. I don't know a lot about guns. He knows a lot about guns. I feel like once you pick it up, you're probably going to know whether it's a toy or real, because toys are usually plastic. No, not really. Really? Because I feel like a real gun will be a lot like, his guns weigh a fucking ton. They make some ridiculous replica ones that weigh the same and look the really? same. Really? Why? Yeah. <clears throat> because, you know, if you can't get an actual thundercock, you could have a Thundercock replica just so you still feel like you have a Thundercock. True story. But why? So you can have you can show everybody your Thundercock. But it doesn't do anything. You know the guy we saw on the Vice show, the the Nazi? Yeah. Who had to pull out every gun he had and throw it on the bed? Mm -hmm. That guy. But those were real. Yeah, but he's not gonna get any more of those because he's in jail now. <laughs> But I don't understand the point when they're not real. It's the anyway. it's the same reason men stuff socks down the front of their shirt their shorts, Tara. He told me that was because they were absorbent. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Um, <laughs> I'm not even mad. That was good. <laughs> No, it's just who finds a gun? Who finds a gun and says, I better check. I you better. Know what? Yeah. And you know what's on the other side of walls in malls? People! <clears throat> other stores, stock rooms, rooms with people in them. You can't just fire a fucking bullet into a wall in a public place because there's something on the other side of that wall. I'm I'm not even you, you know I'm I'm not sure if this would work, but it occurs to me that if you fire a metal object into electrical wires, something bad might happen. Maybe we could get people to test this in a controlled situation, but my gut instinct says if you shoot live current, that's a fire. And just once again, the people that work there, not paid nearly enough for this Fuck bullshit. Fuck no! <laughs> Whoever had to deal with that, probably making 10 bucks an hour. Also, who leaves their gun in a dressing room? I know! Like, were you trying on jeans and just forgot to switch it over, switch it back? Like, how does that happen? I mean, your cell phone, I could maybe understand. Your keys, possibly. Yeah. But your gun? That seems like something you'd really want to keep track of. That should be like a dis. If you leave, if you forget your gun somewhere, that should kind of be a disqualifier to you getting it back. Yeah, you yes. shouldn't get it back. Yeah, you should. No. Uh, 
Okay, this next this next one kind of it, it makes me feel a little happy. It it brings like a warm fuzzy feeling to my heart. Does it have monkeys? Does <laughs> it does not? Well, it has a Neanderthal. I think that that's that's kind of, but no monkeys. But still, I I I, I got a big warm fuzzy out of this one. Uh man who claimed he was stabbed after being mistaken for a neo-Nazi was <laughs> lying. Man who claimed he was stabbed now admits he made up the whole story after accidentally stabbing himself. Joshua Witt, 26, told police two weeks ago he was getting out of his car in the parking lot of a steak and shake in Sheridan, Colorado, when a man came over to him and attacked him with a knife. Witt, who posted his claims on Facebook, claimed a man asked him if he was a neo-Nazi while reaching over his open car door to stab him. Police became suspicious of his story because surveillance video did not show anyone running from the scene, as Witt had claimed. And they also looked at video from a nearby sporting goods store, which showed Witt buying a small knife minutes before the alleged attack. That's a weird, weird coincidence. You, okay, there is being a dumbass. That's, that's one level. Then there's being a dumbass who cannot operate a knife. That's a fair, that is one of the most simple machines in human history. It's literally called. Right, shut the fuck up, because my art school ass has a lot of scars from exacto knives, okay? They slip sometimes. Sure. Sure they do. They do. But to go one further to say, well, I'm a dumbass. I've cut my hand open. I know I'll save face by trying to claim somebody thought I was a Nazi and everyone will feel bad for me. No. No, no. Because they, they tend to look into those things. Yeah, look at look at this doofus. Like, did right you here. think they were just gonna arrest some random Antifa, and that was gonna be it? And yeah. you would have won because you got a random black block guy thrown away, thrown in jail. Like, no, they tend to want like proof. Yeah. Also, okay, can we talk about the haircut? Why yeah. is this the Nazi haircut now? Because it was Hitler's haircut, right? No, Hitler did not do the shaved sides thing. Yeah, he did, didn't he? No, he had kind of like, you know, a part and what. He didn't do the shaved side. This like this faux hawk thing with the with the wave over it. Why is this? Because I see all the, I see. I've seen this. The manager <coughs> of the of the local Chick-fil-A I was driving by. To be go into Best Buy, and I drove by the Chick Fil A, and I saw the manager. He had to be the manager because he was the oldest guy there in uniform, I think. He had this haircut, and that just made me. I'm already a little iffy on Chick Fil A, for obvious reasons. But I mean, obviously, you should stab. Him. <clears throat> no, no, I, I'm not gonna. No, no. But what is, what is what? I think because it's just douchey it is really isn't it yeah it's just really fucking douchey yeah. and the man bun was already claimed by the hipsters so this was the next douchiest cut i just i just want the, the nazis to take all the douchey haircuts so so people will stop wearing them. i want i want barbers and hairstylists all over the nation to make a silent pact that if some motherfucker comes in and asks for this haircut, you bowl cut him. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it'd be like, no, no, man, I'm doing you a favor. I promise I'm doing you a favor here. You're not getting laid either way. Yeah, so. I'm just going to mark you as what you are. Oh. Okay, next one. Of all the, sometimes we see things on these stories and I wonder, why would people steal that? Like ambulances and fire trucks. 
Because why would you do it? What's the resale value on an ambulance, really? Makeup testers was always what killed me when I worked in cosmetics. Like, they'd steal the tester. And I'm like, why are you going to steal the half-empty lip gloss that 62 other women have had their germs all over? Like, you're stealing. Go for the gold. Take the product. Well, this one... Not only did he, not only did this person steal something that made no sense to me, but by God, he wanted to keep it. Stolen school bus prompts chase through two counties. Wow. Driver toss gun out of window. And let's have a look at Brandon Peckinpah, who was the Ms. person. Miss Frizzle has hit hard times, huh? Brandon Peckinpah. <laughs> steal. Oh, where'd he go? Come back, Brandon. Stealer of school buses. Holy moly. Brandon, can we talk for a second, buddy? He's got he's kind he's got a weird hybrid between the Nazi cut and the bowl cut, weirdly. He's like hovering. It's an unlikely sight on Birmingham area interstates Monday morning as law enforcement officials from multiple agencies chased a stolen school bus. Brandon Peckinpah, 24, of Kentucky, was booked into the Jefferson County Jail short, shortly before 11 a.m. Monday. He was charged with attempting to elude law enforcement, reckless endangerment, resisting arrest. Uh, the Alabama in law enforcement agency is expected to seek attempted murder warrant against him for running into a state trooper vehicle. Now, nobody was hurt, but if you hit a, if you hit a trooper car... With a bus? Yeah. Peckinpah told authorities his friends left him and he needed a ride. Oh. Began sure. about 1 a.m. Well, okay, the, then. When authorities say the bus was stolen from the home of a bus driver. Authorities later received a call from a citizen who was following the stolen school bus. The citizen was told to stop following the bus. Law enforcement officials were, notice, were notified. Deputies came into contact with the stolen bus on I-59. Driver refused to stop and pursuit ensued. I'm sorry, hang on. The bus was stolen at 1 a.m. Yes. It took them till 7.40 a.m. to find him? <laughs> so he was just tooling around for six hours in a they stolen- They know the address the bus was stolen from at 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. And it took them Six hours and 40 minutes to find a guy in a stolen motherfucking school bus? Uh, yeah. Who hadn't left the county? <laughs> really? They're right on top of shit there in Alabama, I gotta say. Um, the, the, the school bus was op ultimately stopped. Christian said the driver threw a handgun out of the school bus window. Yeah, like they're not going to notice that. Like, like that's just old casual. Like they're like not gonna. <laughs> what? That's not my gun. I didn't drop my gun. Motherfucker! All these cars have cameras on them. And you're in a bus. And you're in a bus. And all of these cars just videotape you in the bus throwing a gun out the window. You're not subtle. You're not smart. Why Nothing did you... is subtle in a fucking school bus. Why did you do this? Why you the... needed a ride home. A school... I like that they point out no children were on board the bus at the time. The bus that was stolen at 1 a.m. <laughs> do they think kids just hang out on the school bus? <laughs> like they just live there? Well, you missed your stop. Just... That's their fucking respawn point. <laughs> you missed your stop, Timmy. You know the rules. You got to sleep on the bus tonight. Oh man, <laughs> not again! <laughs> they don't. School buses don't just spontaneously grow children. That's not. That's not how human reproduction works. Oh, why? Why God? Why? Yeah. A oh, bus. And we have another. La this last one is you, dumb motherfucker. That there's. Uh, your plan is bad. Your plan is just bad. Ohio men tired of renting to addicts torches trailer home. Oh. Ohio. 
man told authorities he set a vacant trailer home on fire in southern Ohio because he's tired of renting to drug addicts. Deputies arrived at a property owned by 41-year-old Robert Violette last week and found him accepting to extinguish a fire in one of his trailers with a garden hose. An incident report Jeez. says Violette told, officer, told deputies he wanted to torch all the trailers on his property because of drug-addicted tenants. I mean, alternately, you could just start doing background checks. Or they're your trailers. You ain't got to rent them to anybody. Sell them. True, you could also sell them. Sell the motherfuckers. You don't have to burn them down. Why did you burn them down? <laughs> That's not a great solution. That's not a, it's not a solution at all. <laughs> There's a couple ways you could have gone that could have avoided the fire. You see the real estate agent there's like, yeah, we could get you a 30, 50 thou for these. No, nope, no, nope, they must no. burn. And then at the moment they give of Elmo in front of the fire, burn it all. Burn. And then after that, after he set the fuckers on fire to be out there with the guard nose going like Okay, this was not the, the way I intended this to go. It spread a little too fast. I wasn't thinking about this. I'll show you, junkies. You idiots! <laughs> no. It's like, well, you know what? When you say it out loud, it doesn't sound like such a good idea. Yeah, no. like when you say it like that, it sounds dumb. <laughs> <laughs> but I... It does. But at the time, it seemed like a really good plan. It seemed like the sensible thing to do. <laughs> what the fuck? I mean, you ever watched that show where they were cooking meth in the trailer? I don't want that. <laughs> Only solution was to burn it. You don't. There's nothing in the law that says you have to rent those trailers to people. You can. I mean, presumably, if you own them, you want to make money on your investment. Or it was a secondary source of income for him. But then, yeah, you sell them. You sell them. You sell the or shit. Or do a fucking background check on your tenants. I've had to do background checks for rentals before. Make sure I'm not, like, wanted for fucking skinning people or something. They never found out. As why the fire and the night? Shut up. The guard Fire house. Is rarely, Fire is rarely a solution to your problem. Yes. Shut up. <laughs> like, it, and also, there, there are few problems to which burn it all is is a workable solution. And also, I pointed this out before. Even if Tara doesn't believe me, you can't just set stuff on fire, even if you own it. You need permits. You yeah, need you need supervision. I mean, I thought this was America. No. You can't. Just because you own something doesn't mean you can burn it down. I think that's unfair. Fire doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> it's fire does not does not be like oh just burn down this one thing okie dokie gotcha no fire is like burn it all <laughs> fire I is think a little Tara was house Fulton I'm a Tully thank you fire not is just a... because of the hair I took a quiz fire is a workaholic okay mm. it doesn't take breaks it doesn't no. need a day off it's just gonna it's just gonna be fire. It's just going to go. It's going to do its thing. God damn it. This week hurt me. <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, this was like a championship stupid week. Just, sunblock in the eyes, man. Just sunblock. First thing we learned this week. Sunshine on my shoulder makes me happy. But sunblock in my eyes makes me dumb. You are free to wear sunscreen, but not in your eyes. Don't do that. It's so bad for you. Why? It's not. How did you. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
This this good for skin, good for eyes. Yeah. Yay! Good. Eyeballs are basically the same stuff as skin, right? If you poke it, you don't even feel anything. I smart person, I oh, good. When they repossess your car, we've learned that a crowbar is not your best argument to getting your getting it returned to you. That's that's not a they that's, that's it's not like you have to battle the repo man to the death and then you win or something. No. No. Not how it works. Life yeah. re life repo man is very intense. Um <laughs> we've learned cardboard boxes and bumpy car rides are not things that make anti-tank rounds happy. They tend to get a little testy when you do that. They will make house calls oh, for that. Yes, they will. They will. If you call them and be like, "Well, Dag, burn it. I just found an old anti tank round in my basement." They will come over. They will. They will. They come. will bring friends. They. It will be a fucking party. You should make coffee. Everyone will be there with lights, and there. They will bring you a robot, motherfucker. <laughs> you can't keep it. You can't keep it. But they but will. They'll bring it. They will bring a robot. That sounds like a party to me. Um, we've learned if you find a gun that's not your gun, you don't know where the gun, gun, gun came from, don't test the gun! No! It's, it's not like, it's not like a test. It's not like a quiz. It's not like a real or not real. This is not, this is not a show. Don't just, well, I, and that what think to the next second ahead after you fired the fucking gun. What happens then? If, if it goes off, you're like, well, okay. If it goes through the person in the next fitting room, you can't be like, my bad. There's no back seas on that. Uh, no back seas uh, on bullets. No back. You can't. No. Just we've, give it to an authority figure and let them sort it out. We've learned that if you if you cannot operate a knife effectively, what the hell makes you think you're going to operate an elaborate cover up? I think that's unfair. I don't think it's about knife clumsiness. I think it's about being a Nazi douchebag. Personally. And you know, the story doesn't even mention if the guy was actually one of the motherfuckers or not, but now everyone's going to think he is. Yeah. Now everyone's going to, like, I hope you actually are, because everyone assumes you are now. There is your label. We've, we've, so if, if you voted for Hillary, you, like, double fucked up. Yeah. We, we've not because you voted for Hillary, YouTubers. We, we, we've learned that... Uh... Sometimes there are just if I don't even have a good there's there's not a good there's not a good one for the school bus. I don't have one. <laughs> I just do not have one. There's no lesson to be learned here. Cause if you're this fucking stupid in the first place, nothing I can say is going to dissuade you from stealing a school bus. I feel like don't steal school buses is a good lesson though. Don't throw guns out of windows of moving vehicles ever. That's, also a good lesson. That's If your friends bail on you and don't drive you home, get a fucking Uber. If you're time. broke, call your friends and yell at them. You can walk. You can walk. It is, you will not go to jail for walking. You will go to jail for stealing a school bus. I mean, not if you're white. He was white, so yeah, he could walk. Find the school bus though, not gonna work out. And finally, we've learned before you jump to arson, explore all of your po of your potential look, options. Look at some other options first. Just just look into it. Look around. You may. Like, have... I don't want to tell you how to live your life. I'm just saying, look into some other options. Arson is not the go-to, is what we're saying. Yeah, it definitely shouldn't be option one. You know the absolute 
most insidious thing I found about stupid people. They're like, they're like little surprises. <laughs> because you can't tell someone is stupid just by looking at them. You have to wait until the fire starts. 